the, the, the rib cage attachments and then the placement of the thighs on the anterior and all that sort of stuff. Is that how? Because like, the other way that we've been taught, it, like typically, in, sure. um, is also when there's short hip flexors, right. we tend to see an anterior tilt. But I think that's probably with iliacus, maybe. Yeah, and see, that, that's a, that, you have to say what everything else is doing if you're talking about yeah. anatomical neutral. So yes, if you're standing in neutral, mm -hmm. and your hip flexor, look over here. Yes. Yeah. Um, if you're standing anatomical neutral and, and your hip flexors shorten, and this is why it's important to not put psoas into hip flexor category because you can have all of the other hip flexors putting you into an anterior tilt relative to the femur, but at the same time your psoas can then take your anterior tilt and flex the entire thing. So there's a neutral pelvis relative to the floor, there's a neutral pelvis relative to the thigh, there's a neutral pelvis relative to the lumbar spine, and there's a neutral pelvis relative to you know, the head. Those are all different things. Because as you just said, like what do you call it? What do you call it? We could, we could have someone who is an anterior tilt, like an like a iliacus that doesn't yield. So put yourself there. It helps if you're kinetic about it. So hip flexor is short, and it could be iliacus could also be rectus femoris, like your quadricep. So here you are, you're in an anterior tilt. This really hurts my back. <laughs> so then you could at the same time have psoas shortening, which would pull the femurs forward and untuck your spine. Those are mutually exclusive things. But they get so lumped in the same category that there's no way. It's like, what do you mean I have an anterior tilt? So now this person is in neutral pelvis, right? We're like, oh, you're perfect. You've got neutral pelvis. But at the same time, now they're in hip flexion. So that's why you have to set all the stance points at the same time to catch what's really going on. Are you going to see knee flexion more with that? Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, you would see um, that's a real flexion. chronic. Yeah, because if not, you'd be, you know, wherever else. Like, there's all these, like, subtle other joint deformations. So it's always more complicated. The answer is, the answer is always, it depends, and it's always more complicated than that. So you can have short hip flexors and short psoas, and those can take the pelvis. One is taking the pelvis relative to the hip, but the other one is taking the pelvis relative to the floor. It's really cool. Once you start getting into it, it's like, whoa, that's awesome. You can have either an anterior tilt or a posterior tilt, but the same, no matter which one you have, the real problem that you have is a lack of hip extension when you're walking, and that's why you don't have the glutes and the pelvic floor or whatever. So it's less about maintaining this perfect pelvic positioning as you move, as you move and it's more about like the pelvis setting the optimal range of motion for the femur to move through hip extension because that's where that glute work is happening as you're moving. It's really hard to write. It's really tedious. Okay.